and welcome to another adventure on the Adventure Ash channel. Well guys, today's adventure is going to take us to Chinchilla, a region about three and a half hours northwest of Brisbane CBD. We're heading out here today in hopes to find some petrified wood that the region is quite famously known for. <music> On my way out to the site, I stopped in at the Visitors Information Centre in Chinchilla to speak to the locals about what I should be looking for and how's best to find it. It was here that I also paid for the $5 permit to use the fossicking site that I wanted to for the day, as it is actually on a privately owned plot of land that the farm is open to the general public. <laughs> The first cool thing to note about petrified wood is that it is indeed a fossil. It is a mould and imprint of a prehistoric plant from millions and millions of years ago. The chinchilla petrified wood was formed between 140 and 180 million years ago during the Jurassic period, yes, when dinosaurs roamed the earth. This was at a period when Australasia was still connected to India and Antarctica in the giant continent called Gondwana. Let's set the following scene of how the Chinchilla Petrified Wood was formed. The breakup of the supercontinent Pangaea and subsequently the breakup of the giant continent Gondwana resulted in a lot of volcanic activity from tectonic plate movement. This volcanic activity in the Jurassic period was known as the Jurassic Volcanic Event Flow. The Jurassic Volcanic Event Flow was comprised of ashfall, lava and lahar flows. The build-up of material from these Jurassic volcanic event flows from ashfall, lava flow and lahars gradually built in layers up and up and up, burying any organic material including any trees still present. As the layers accumulated, they compressed under their own weight, creating the constraints for the first condition for wood petrification, an oxygen-free environment. The second condition for wood petrification is that the cell structure of the tree is infiltrated by the different minerals in which it is being buried. The silicas in the volcanic flows gradually replace the wood cells, with the variation in minerals and oxides determining and controlling the resultant colour of the petrified wood. Eventually, after millions of years, the final product of petrified wood is formed, and we can now dig it up to see what was buried long ago. Now there are, there is one specific wood unique to the chinchilla area and it's the chinchilla redwood. It can only be found in this part of the world and talking to the lovely gentleman at the Visitor Information Centre, it's, it's hard to find but it's not impossible so that's definitely going to be my aim for today. So, very keen to start finding some of this stuff. We're just about to arrive, so let's see what we can find. Okay guys, now I've actually found a half decent piece. Look at that. It doesn't even need polishing, it just needs a bit of a clean. I'm really hoping that when I clean that, I'm going to see a good cross section of that. That is chinchilla red petrified wood. How cool!
geological hammer. Now I'm pretty sure, looking at the banding on that, that should be some good stuff. What I'll do is I'll get a little bit of my water. Oh, beautiful. That is a good piece of petrified wood. <laughs> So I think I'm fully done here at this location. Found a few good specimens, but I really won't be able to tell until I get them back home, wash them under some water with a bit of um, warm soap, and see if I actually was successful to find this specific petrified wood special to the chinchilla area. Let's go home. <laughs> Always remember guys, when visiting different locations, leave it the way you found it. If you came across it closed, you leave it closed. So that's my one big thing. Leave it exactly how you found it and leave nothing but footprints. Really happy with some of the specimens. I have to clean them up. So I'll check back in with you guys when I am back at home cleaning them up and seeing what I got from that. So guys, here's a look at some of the final specimens that I managed to pick up from the site. I was really taken aback by the quality of some of them, particularly since you can see some distinct features on them that are really reflective of twigs and bark and branches in general. I also managed to pick up a few pieces of chinchilla redwood, which is actually shown on screen now, so I'm really happy with what I found that day and very keen to get out there again. So that brings us to the end of this video. If you enjoyed or learnt something new today, I would really appreciate it if you hit that like button and subscribe as it really helps support me and my new adventures.